Hey there, happy coders. This is Kevin from Happy Coding here. And today I'm going to walk through the process of downloading and installing Jetty and then using Jetty to run a server on your local computer and uh, deploy a Hello World web application or, or website. So Jetty is, is handy if you are getting into server side coding because it lets you run a server on your own computer without worrying about figuring out how to run a live server or paying for a service that does that for you like Google Cloud or uh, Amazon Web Services or things like that. So Jetty is, is nice for, for getting into coding without needing to do any of that stuff. So you can run through this on happycoding.io if you are uh, if you prefer reading through tutorials but I'm just going to kind of run through it myself here. So the first thing I want to do is download Jetty. So I'm going to just Google Jetty and uh, I might have to Google like Jetty server. Uh, I don't want this kind of Jetty. I want this kind of Jetty, right? And I can go to download and I'm looking for the latest version, which currently is 11. So I'm gonna download this zip and that will download as a zip file, which is just a, a file that contains a directory. It's kind of an easier way to, to package up multiple files without having to download a bunch of files. Um, it's going to take a minute to download, and while I stall for time, um, we're just kind of waiting for this to, to finish. Maybe I should have done cooking show style where I just switch over to it already downloaded. But whatever, we're here together. One thing I might talk about while it's uh, finishing up whatever it's doing is that the different versions of Jetty are quite a bit different. So starting with, I don't know if it was 10 or 11, the, they changed how some of it worked. So um, some of the stuff we're gonna do today is different than what you would have had to do if you were using an old version. Anyway, um, that, that finished. So I'm gonna open up my zip file, which gives me a directory, and I'm going to unzip that directory. You can put it anywhere you want. I'm gonna put it on my desktop for now. And again, maybe I should have done some of this ahead of time, but I wanted to sort of show every little step because I, I feel like I always get stuck on some of this uh, like setup stuff, which is not super interesting, but you know, you just gotta get through it to get to the fun stuff. So I'm kind of demoing that kind of boring and painful process. So whatever. So I have this Jetty home directory and it's Jetty home dash 11.0.6 here because that's the current version. Um, and inside of it, you've got a few uh, directories and files, and we'll get to them in a second. But um, what I was talking about earlier, where something changed in the more recent versions of Jetty, is that you no longer put your code in this directory. In old versions, you would put the code in this directory. And in Tomcat, if you've watched that video, um, Tomcat servers, you also put your code directly inside of the kind of the download folder. Uh, both Jetty, at least the latest version, is a little different. So um, what you actually need to do is create a new directory. And we're going to call it like Jetty uh, Base. You know, you can actually call it whatever you want, um, but Jetty calls it Jetty Base internally. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, so now I've got my Jetty Home, which contains Jetty itself. And I've got my Jetty Base directory, which actually doesn't contain anything yet. And that's OK. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is kind of initialize Jetty. So I have these files downloaded and I have my empty directory, but I need to kind of connect these two directories. I need to tell Jetty that this is a sort of Jetty web app directory. And there are a few ways to do that. And both ways kind of have one thing in common where you need to run this, uh, wait, this, <laughs> one of these let's see um it is in oh it's just in the top level directory oh it's right here duh um so you have to run this jar file and point it to your jetty base directory and so you can either open a command line to jetty base and run your command there pointing it to the jar or you can do it the other way around and run this jar from this directory pointing it to jetty base and so for fun maybe i'll just do both i don't know how fun that's going to be but just to demonstrate both. So I'm in Jetty Home, and so what I need to do is run start.jar, which is in this directory, 
and point it to Jetty Base. So the way I would do that is I'm going to run java-jar and then I'm going to give it the start.jar um, file name and then I'm going to give it the jetty.base argument and that is going to be equal to the path to my jetty base directory. So I'm going to go open up my jetty base directory and I'm going to copy this whole thing. And then I need one more uh, set of arguments and that is um, I need to add a few things to my jetty base directory um, and I'm just going to copy paste this. Um, I'm getting this from the tutorial itself um, because I, I never remember um, but it's it's here it's this add module blah 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 stuff and so I'm going to paste that in as well so I am running the start.jar file and I'm setting jetty.base equal to my jetty base directory and then I'm telling it to add modules to that jetty base directory and I'm going to run that And there you go, base directory was modified. So now I can go back to Jetty Base, and now I can see that there are these new directories in here. And you can you can look through these if you want, but you generally won't have to touch them. Um, okay, so just for like the other, just to demonstrate the other way. So right now, what I did is I started from Jetty Home, and I ran start.jar, pointing it to uh, jetty base. You can do it the other way around. So let me demonstrate that. So first I'm going to kind of delete these and it's as if they were never there. Jetty base is no longer initialized. So now what I'm going to do is open up a command line to this directory, to my jetty base directory, and there's nothing in there right now. And I need to run the start.jar file from here. So I need to do Java dash jar and I can't just do start.jar here because that file is not in this directory. I need to give it the full path to um, to start.jar over here and there we go. Uh, that's really annoying. Um, let me do it. Uh, let me just reopen it. There we go. And so uh, the, the full path of the jar which is going to be that whole thing desktop jetty home blah 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 jar, uh, sorry, start.jar, and then I, so I no longer need to give it the jetty base argument because I'm already in jetty base. And so the only thing I need to do is give it that add module uh, argument. So I'm running the jar, I'm already in jetty base, I'm running the jar in uh, jetty home, and I'm adding some modules, so I'm going to hit enter here. And the base directory was modified again. And now you can see that those, those directories are back. And so, you know, you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. They, they have the same end result. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of up to you. Um, all right, cool. So I've initialized Jetty Base. And you can, you can look through these if you want. I think Web Apps is going to be empty. Um, you can look through these. I actually don't even really know what these are because uh, I never have to look at them so this is you know some properties that you can probably change if you want to uh, we won't need to today start.d probably contains some other startup things um, yeah you know nothing too exciting um, but you can look through them if you're curious so now I've got my jetty base and what do I want to do now so the next thing I want to do is run jetty so what we've done so far is just kind of initialize jetty and the next thing I need to do is run start.jar again uh, with kind of a similar idea where I need to either run it from, you know, from Jetty Home, giving it the Jetty base directory, or I need to run it from Jetty base, giving it the full path for start.jar. So let me just see what command line I already have open. Um, so I've already done it this way, so I'm just going to do it this way. So basically what you need to do is run the exact same uh, command only get rid of the add module stuff add module tells the start.jar file to uh, Initialize jetty if you don't have that then it's telling it to run jetty So I'm in jetty base and I'm giving it the full path to the jar and that's it. That's all that's all I'm doing I'm just running the jar Okay, and it's pretty fast and once you see like started server at blah 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 
that means that your server is running. And so what I can do now is go to localhost colon 8080 and we see this error message and believe it or not this is actually a good thing uh, this is not me messing up like i do in every single video uh, this is actually what we expected to see and the important part here is that like you see this kind of error page and you see powered by jetty down here uh, which means that this is actually hitting our jetty server we just don't have any files yet and to sort of prove that that's true what i can do is kill my server by hitting Control c in the command line and then I'm going to go to localhost 8080 again. And we'll see kind of a, a different error message, which will say like this, this whole server, this, this server does not exist. There's no connection here. Uh, so when I run Jetty, and then I go back here, then you see, you know, you see this error message, which is saying, yeah, I connected to your Jetty server, but there's no files in your Jetty server. So I don't know what you want me to do. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is, you know, add some files here. And the way you can do that is uh, exploring your Jetty base directory. Let me close out some of these windows are getting annoying. Uh, you see this web apps directory, and this is where you put your files. So what I'm going to do is create a new directory. And I'm going to say, I don't know, hello. And I'm going to click into that. And then I'm going to create a new HTML file, new text document. Sure. There's a bunch of ways to do this. This is how I always do it. You could, you know, open up your favorite text editor and create it from there as well. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I have this empty index.html file and I, I never, <laughs> I never write HTML by hand. Uh, I, I, I always copy paste it. So I'm going to steal it from myself. Um, you can steal it from me too. That's what it's here for. So I'm going to steal some HTML content and I'm going to paste that into my text editor here. So I've got index.html, which contains this, this HTML content. And you know, if you're not super familiar with HTML, totally cool. Um, you can check out happycoding.io and check out our um, check out our HTML tutorials and whatnot. But for now, I'm just going to kind of stick with this kind of little file, and you can probably guess it. A lot of the tags in there. Anyway, uh, so I've got my web app hello, and I've got index.html. So that means that I can go to slash hello slash index.html, and I should I do. I see the HTML content that's in the file. So what we can do is, you know, maybe edit this HTML a little bit. I am a Jetty server. And I save that and it's complaining for some reason. And I think I can probably guess at why, but we're going to just try it again. Um, right. So if this happens, it's probably because your server is still running. So you can sometimes just kill your server, then save it, and then rerun your server. It kind of depends on your um, your operating system and your, your text editor settings and a bunch of things. But if it happens, don't panic. Uh, kill your server, save your file, and then, and then you can refresh. And now we see our uh, message that we added to our HTML. And so that workflow is going to be pretty common where you edit your content over here, and then you run your server again, and then you click refresh and you see your changes. Um, other than that, let's see. So in this web apps directory, you can also put other types of files. So you can put image files, you can put CSS files, JavaScript files, all that stuff that um, if you've done sort of client side web development that, you, that you've already used. And if you haven't used it yet, then you know, like I said, go check it out. Uh, but you can put any file in here and it'll sort of behave exactly the same where it'll be served at this sort of uh, this this URL, which is based on the name of the directory. So this is the name of your web app. In our case, we chose hello. And you might not like that. You might not want this hello. Um, you can have multiple web apps running on your computer and that can be handy if, if you if you're doing something that involves like multiple things running at once. But a lot of people, all they want is a single web page or a single web app, and they don't really want this uh, like sub path part in their URL. And if that's you, then what you can do is, this is probably going to yell at me, so I'm going to kill my server first. 
Uh, what you can do is basically rename your web app directory and name it to something uh, special. It's root. I don't think the capitalization matters, but most tutorials you see will use all caps. And now I'm going to run my server again. And what I should be able to do is get rid of this hello. And yeah, cool. So now you see that uh, because I use this kind of magic name, uh, anything that's in root will be served from the top of the URL. So after the 8080 part without any subpath information in it. And I'm actually curious about something that I have never actually tried before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that is what happens if I try something like this. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. So I'm going to re go back here and I'm going to rename. Actually, I'm going to close out. Yeah, I already, already did. I'm going to rename this to hello again. So I've lost my sort of root um, web app. And what I'm going to try to do is create a, create another file here. I, I'm just curious. I just want to see. So what happens if I do, let's call it something like test. And now I'm going to run my server again. Okay. And I want to try. I just want to see. I just want to see what happens. Test.html. Does this work? No. Okay. So you need your files to be inside of a web app directory. You can't just put them at this top level. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so if you if you don't want the path, then use then use root, and that's that's totally fine. All right, let me make sure that I didn't break anything. I'm gonna run my server. Actually, it's already running. Cool. And let me go back to index.html, and there we go. Okay. So I've got my web apps directory, and I've got my root web app directory, and then I have index in there. Um, let me just double check, see if there's anything else that I missed that I wanted to talk about. Um, no, that's about it. So there are a bunch of things you can do from here. This is scratching the surface of getting Jetty downloaded and installed and running the first web app. Um, but from here, you can start to get into server side coding. And let me go to happy coding. And if that's if that's what you're looking for, then you know there's a bunch of tutorials here. Check that out, or I'll put out another video pretty soon. And uh, other than that, you can also play around with like client-side web development just by putting in more files in here. So images, JS, CSS, that kind of thing. Uh, but for now, I think that's where I'm going to call the video. So if you were looking to download Jetty and get your first web app running and kind of get through this confusing Jetty home, Jetty base thing, hopefully this video helped and I'll see you in the next one. Um, so thanks for watching. Have a great day. And as always, happy coding.